Hello, welcome back to Biblical Stories of Resistance. Today we're going to look at Joseph. We'll start in Genesis chapter 39. You're probably familiar with the story of Joseph, who is the son of Jacob, one of the patriarchs in Genesis. Well, Joseph was sold into Egypt, and that's where the story picks up. Genesis 39.1 says, Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him from, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and was in the house of the Egyptian master. His master saw the Lord was with him, and the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and attended him, and made him over, and he made him overseer of his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in the house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all he had, in house and in field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything that was left except the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, because of me my master has no concern about anything in his house, and he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her to lie with her, or beside her, or with her. But one day, when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house were in there, she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand, and fled, and got out of the house. And as soon as she saw that he had left his garment in her hand, and had fled out of the house, she called to the men of her household, and said to them, See, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And as soon as he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled and got out of the house. Then she laid up his garment by her until his master came home. This story is not one we normally think of when we think of resistance. We think of resistance as being something that you do against a great power. But you can argue that's exactly what Joseph was doing. He was facing one who was more powerful than, he, than himself, he himself. He was a slave. And his master's wife wanted him. He had received great blessings. He was proficient in all of his work. And she desired him. This story of resistance begins in the heart of Joseph. He was faithful. He resisted. Now, this is something, I hate to say it, but there are plenty of men who could justify giving in to this temptation to sleep with this woman. He could even say, I'm doing what one of my bosses says to do because she, in a sense, had authority over him. But Joseph wouldn't do that. He knew better. He knew, if I give in to her, I am sinning. Not only against Potiphar, my master, I am sinning against God. So he wouldn't do it. We know that later God would use him to deliver his own brothers, his father, and all their household. But before those great things could happen, First, Joseph had to learn resistance. There are plenty of people in Scripture and after God's Word was written who have been faithful resistors. But Satan knows their weakness. There are plenty who would not give in fear in the face of battle, but they would give because their moral virtue is tainted. Satan knows your weak spots. 
and those who would say that they would faithfully resist, maybe they would when they're opposing those who are great powers, but there's another power. Paul calls it the power of our flesh, the lust of our flesh, as the Apostle John speaks of it in 1 John. This power works within us, and it works against us. All the excuses Joseph had were no excuses at all. They could not work. Joseph knew right and wrong, and had he given in to this sin, God would not have used him to save his people. So what can we learn from the example of Joseph? Really, there's just one lesson I want to point out, and that is your moral strength, the virtue that you have now, the character that you develop, is what will determine whether or not you can faithfully resist. Sure, there are plenty of things outside of you that you can resist. But if you can't resist the temptations that come, you will be a sitting duck. So begin in your heart with the very computer that you're using right now. Purpose that you will not give in. There are any number of temptations that Satan can and will bring against you. He knows your weakness. But the Holy Spirit is greater than your weakness. Jesus Christ died that you may walk free from sin. So practice now walking in the moral excellence that Scripture calls us. Give yourself faithfully to killing sin so that when the hour of temptation comes and the battle rages and you are opposed from the outside, you will be strong so that when the temptation comes and you are threatened internally, like Joseph, you will be faithful to stand no matter what the consequences are. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you next time.